We're going to get started right now with news you can use as soon as I get my camera fixed. Here we go. All right. News you can use for today. This is uh, going to be part two of what we started uh, on Tuesday, which was the cities that win in the next five years. These are some predictions uh, that I'm making and that I basically have gotten a lot of this information from a couple guys. I want to give a shout out to Bruce Norris and Nick Gurley. Um, these guys have, are, are masters in this industry in terms of statistical forward looking and based on some of their research and some things I've done on myself, uh, here's what we've come up with. So on the last call, on part one, we talked about some of the factors that are going to have a big effect. We, and I'm not going to go through them in detail, but briefly, uh, migration is important. National mo migration from one state to another or one region of the country for another. An example I used was a lot of people in California move from California to Nashville. And then there's local migration. Local migration would be people are moving from Nashville to Knoxville, which is only a couple hours away, uh, but it's a lot cheaper in Knoxville uh, than it is in Nashville. Then we have affordability. Uh, there are some markets around the country that are just plain affordable. Uh, and the example that I used there was Oklahoma City. Now, less than 300,000 is the average uh, price of house. Um, and with something like that, that's a brand new home you can get built for less than 300K. And it's a half mile from Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, things like that. So it's where people want to live and it's affordable. Uh, then the, we have what's called ownership incentive was the third factor we looked at last, last call. Ownership incentive is where it is literally cheaper to own a house than it is to rent a house. California is the opposite of that. California is much cheaper uh, to rent than it is to own. In an area like Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, it's much cheaper to own than it is to rent. And even at an eight or 9% interest rate, it's still cheaper. So for example, the average rent in Pittsburgh is $1,500. At an 8% interest, the average home only costs $1,200. So even at a much higher interest rate, like we're starting to see happen, it's gonna be less expensive. Uh, one of the other factors that we looked at was the last housing crisis. Now, during the Great Recession, 2007 to the bottom of the market was 2014, 2012. It then stayed flat till 14 before it started coming up. But for that 2007 to 2012 period of five years, there were literally half a dozen MSAs out of the 350 in the US where the house prices went up, believe it or not. Everybody knows, you know, oh, house prices drop 30, 50, 80%, whatever. Uh, two of them in particular, Pittsburgh and Oklahoma City are on our list. Both of those went up from 2007 to 2012. As history is a good predictor and indicator of the future, uh, we're looking to that type of trend to happen again. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we just touched on positive migration uh, into an area, but um, and we talked about, for example, Indianapolis, for, uh, for example, for 30 years in a row, good times, bad times, good economies, bad economies, good weather, bad weather, whatever. Um, we have a situation where people have moved into 31 years, actually, people have net moved into Indianapolis. And so um, that's a positive trend. That, in other words, the population will continue to grow. Same thing with Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Harrisburg's the capital of PA. 15 years in a row, that's gone up. So our top five houses on the list, or the, the bottom five, number 10 through number six, the 10th best market we predict for the next five years, Knoxville, Tennessee, with the migration factor. Number nine, Oklahoma City uh, for the cost, the low cost. Number eight, Pittsburgh for the ownership advantage. Number seven, Indianapolis for the net migration. And number six, Harrisburg, PA for the net migration and for another factor that we didn't really talk about. Uh, and this is the next factor I want to uh, discuss today. Low home building. So there's 1.7 million units, brand new homes being built in the U.S. today. And of those uh, 1.7, the vast majority, 95%, are in markets like Austin, Texas, for example. Austin, Texas this year has taken out 21 permits for every thousand people. Uh, Harrisburg, PA has taken out two per thousand. So there are no homes or, or a minimal amount of homes uh, being built in those markets. 
And because of that, that is going to create a shortage of properties. There are just no new homes. All you've got to do is deal with the, the homes that are in existence. Um, and for that reason, that, that puts Harrisburg PA number six on our list of best markets to look for uh, in the future. Future There's, there's going to be a home shortage versus a glut. Austin, Texas, obviously, is going to be a glut. We're seeing the problems now because it was overpriced and, and because there's a glut of homes that type of thing. <clears throat> All right, uh, the, the next thing that we need to look at uh, is cap rate. The, the cap rate is different from the ownership advantage. Cap rate basically says if you pay cash for a house, you wanna get the highest return possible as a landlord. So for example, Dallas right now is between two and three cap, cap rate. Uh, number five on our list is got a very good cap rate of about 8%, and it's McAllen, Texas. Uh, McAllen, Texas also is extremely affordable. Its average sale price is about $170,000. Additionally, it's geographically constrained. McAllen's not a well-known area of Texas, but it's literally uh, on the Rio Grande, it's on the Mexican border. It cannot have any more growth to the South. We're in a different country. So for those three factors, McAllen makes the list as the fifth best, best place and uh, primarily because it's got a very good cap rate. Number four on the list has an extremely good cap rate. Once again, this is a landlord's paradise. If you wanna buy and get a great rental property, look for Jackson, Mississippi. Got an extremely high cap rate, close to 10%. So if you were to pay $100,000 for a house, you could potentially get uh, $1,000 or $10,000 a year in rent. That's, that's very good. In California, a million dollar house might bring you $24,000 if you're lucky uh, a, a year, 2% uh, cap rate. So, you know, something like um, Callan, or Jackson, Mississippi is, is high up on our list for the future because of that. Now, the top three on the list have three uh, if, other factors besides uh, being their, their combination, their, their double hitters or their switch hitters. They can, they can be a great place to live because the, the advantage of home ownership is there versus the rent, but the rents are also high enough to be a great place for landlords to buy. So these are double danger markets. These are markets that can go either way. They can be a, a home ownership can live there or you could be a, a great place to be a landlord. Uh, additionally, these places also have low inventory. So you've got a great market for ownership or for landlording and the inventory is low and the number of new homes being built is extremely low. So there's a shortage of product. There is a, 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 a variation as to which way you can go. Um, and they also have, the, the third factor is they have, well, there's four factors. Actually, the third factor is they have high inbound migration for different reasons. Uh, number two on our list in particular, uh, and I'll tell you that in a second, but let me go through number three. Uh, positive job growth, migration in the area, high cap rate, low cost to own a home, uh, and a great advantage of owning versus renting. Uh, and that is a market that I am extensively involved in. It's, it's Little Rock, Arkansas, number three on our list, Little Rock, Arkansas. Number two has all of those factors, everything, including low inventory, but has something else really unique. And it is positioned very close to another city. We talked about this briefly on the first call, uh, where people are having, they're having both national migration in the, into this area and they're having local, Birmingham, Alabama, second on our list. And people are migrating tremendously from the Atlanta region to a couple, three hours away to Birmingham. It has all the advantages with none of the detriments. It doesn't have a ton of bad areas in it. It's got uh, positive migration, positive job growth, good historical records in terms of what it did in the last uh, recession. Um, it has a shortage of product. It has low building. Uh, it, it's a tremendous area to, to look at. It's, uh, like I said, this is like a quadruple winner. And then finally, uh, once you look at all these factors here, job growth, inventory, low home building, cap rates, um, and, and positive migration, 
The number one thing in our list has every one of these factors. It's growing tremendously. It did well in the last recession. A lot of people are moving into it. It's got more jobs than it can fill. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of new homes being built. Uh, there is there is a shortage of homes in the area. And there is no way that even in five years, there could be a glut of homes. I don't believe there's just, there's not enough uh, that, that can happen to, to correct this. And they've got one special factor that the only, they're the only one on this list that has, and it's this city has been smart enough to go out and nationally offer $10,000 to anybody who wants to have a remote job and live in Tulsa, Oklahoma, number one on our list, Tulsa, Tulsa Oklahoma. So th this meets, all, rings all the bells, all the statistical whistles. Uh, it is a great market to be in, whether you want to be a landlord or you want to live there uh, as a homeowner, it's got everything. A and you want to move from California, they'll give you 10,000 bucks per person. So it's, it's great. Um, and I would strongly encourage everybody to look at the list. Let me go through it one more time. Number 10, Knoxville. Number nine, Oklahoma City. Number eight, Pittsburgh. Seven, Indianapolis, Indiana. Six, Harrisburg, PA. Five, McAllen, Texas. Four, Jackson, Mississippi. Number three, Little Rock, Arkansas. Number two, Birmingham, Alabama. Top of the list, number one, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Now, uh, as a word of caution here, there are in some of these areas in particular, Jackson, Mississippi, because um, I used to have a plant not too far from there, there are some really bad areas of town. And so this thing is, a like all real estate, it's a local situation. So you can't just say across the board, it's great to just go buy if it's got a Jackson, Mississippi address. Um, you've got to make sure that you're in the right part of the city. And I would always suggest, as we always do, getting yourself a good local real estate uh, investor-friendly real estate agent, investor-friendly real estate agent in the area to represent your interests there. You don't have to go there. Um, I, I haven't been to Little Rock since I had my manufacturing business in Greenville, Mississippi, and that's 20 plus years ago. So, uh, but we're, we sold two houses yesterday. Uh, we're buying two this week there. It's, you know, we're doing it all remotely. All of this thing can be done remotely. Uh, you don't need to go. You just need to have some good boots on the ground and make sure that you're you're looking at all the stats. So those are over this last two episodes now. These are all the things that, in my opinion, I look at. Of course, there's other things on the list, but you'll notice there's nothing big there. There's no huge Pittsburgh's the biggest or Indy. Uh, but other than that, you know, these aren't huge places, uh, but they are places where people want to live. And so I would definitely uh, take a look at these and then, you know, use that the kind of statistical analysis and look at some of those. Uh, Ashley's got a chart we're going to put up real quickly. And this is a chart of excess versus inventory shortage. And this is current as of last month or the beginning of this month. So the, the markets in red are the ones that are crashing and prices are dropping the Faustus and they just coincidentally happen to be the ones that have too much inventory. Um, and hence, that's why the price is dropping. The ones in blue and, and the lighter colors, uh, blue, per, dark blue, purple, those are, those are areas that are still shortage of houses um, and could take more uh, you know, building in a lot of cases if, if it was available. But those would be some of the areas that I would keep my eyes on in terms of of moving to or working in. All righty.